My name is Bob Cipolli. The airplane is uh, the Stoddicker S300, an airplane that's built right here in the United States. Designed and built by one man, a fellow named John Stoddicker, who uh, came up with an airplane that could compete in aerobatic competition levels with the Russian Sukhois and the uh, French Mudry Cap 10s. As he puts the airplane onto its wingtip and actually caps it off with the spiraling tower, and that's where he holds it, is his minimal airspeed. You could actually stand next to the wingtip, and it was like he was driving the airplane around you. The airplane is 1,300 pounds, has a 330 horsepower engine. It's capable of doing just about any maneuver you can imagine, fly backwards, sideways, upside down. It, it's happy in any attitude. And it's stressed to plus and minus 15 Gs, so it, it can take more beating than I can on a, on a good, good day. He puts six Gs, of course, on his body in the corner and does a four-point hesitation roll as he now goes around on the ailerons one time, back on the stick, as he's right over the numbers at the north end of the airport and the climbing snaps, the vertical snap rolls, holding the airplane on the propeller. There's a hammerhead is down he comes. And the airplane has a wooden wing. This is wood from tip to tip. It's got a wooden spar with a plywood covering. The ailerons are what cause the airplane to roll. In my airplane, the ailerons are covered in fabric, so you can actually see there's a little, little bit of play, a little bit of give in the wing. The ailerons that are on this airplane give the airplane a roll rate of about 360 degrees per second. So I can go from upright all the way around back to upright in one second. The wing itself is very thick. Uh, an aerobatic airplane has a very fat wing uh, designed to uh, give it good stall characteristics and give it uh, the ability to turn very, very tight corners. So I can turn um, a 360 degree turn in about a 250 foot circle at 180 miles per hour. So it's a pretty tight turning airplane. He climbs the airplane in the slider and watch him, looks like he throws it across his shoulder right there. And then the airplane falls, of course he's run out of flying speed and he's gotta get the wind moving across the wing, gotta fly the wing. If you look underneath the wing, some people ask me what these things are for. And these are shovels. Uh, what they do is they make the loads on the stick when you move the stick from left to right, much lighter than they would be under normal conditions. What they do is they work like a sail. When, when the ailerons are deflected, they pick up the wind and they help push the aileron a little bit. So it's like power steering. He yanks back on the stick. Again, when the airplane goes straight up, he has to look left and right to make sure the wingtips are square to the horizon. Then he tilts his head back, picks up the horizon behind him, and that's the way he pulls the airplane over the top. Only this time he's in a power off tail slide and with a stick forward, the nose tumbles over and there's a recovery coming straight down and now he goes back into power. These aerobatic pilots, when they're flying these airplanes, very seldom fly the engines in any condition other than full throttle or dead idle. The card that most aerobatic airplanes carry is called an Arresti chart card. What we have here is all the maneuvers in shorthand. Everything that I'm going to do, it's hard to memorize all these maneuvers, even if you do them a million times. So you want to have some kind of shorthand, some kind of notation. The arrows would indicate a roll. So for instance, in my second maneuver, I'm going to roll the airplane probably five and a half times, and then I'm going to do what we call a torque roll. And the card is very, very useful during a sequence because about three or four minutes into the sequence, when you're, uh, when you're thinking about position and where you are, you might, might lose track, so you want to glance down at your card and get an idea of, of where you're going to go next. Looking left and right, keeping those wings absolutely level, the Stoddicker S300 climbs straight up, over onto its back, down comes the nose. As the nose comes down, they start to accelerate. Before he can go too fast, he does an outside one and a half turn snap off to the right into the rotation of the engine now as he holds it at 100 feet over the runway. He uh, starts the climb, snaps it one time, pulls it over onto its back. And what he's doing here is it looks like he is actually throwing the airplane across the sky. The high G maneuvers, when you see the airplane going straight down and then pull out very, very sharply, those maneuvers, they tend to, uh, to drain the blood out of your head. So you have to learn how to strain, how to strain all your muscles to prevent the blood from flowing out of your head so that you can keep your consciousness. Uh, the other thing that, that you don't see a lot of military pilots doing is very high negative Gs. Negative Gs will, will cause just the opposite thing to happen. All the blood will rush back into your head. That is a very painful maneuver, but if you're gonna do competition, you, you've gotta get used to them. A competition is fun. Um, I like competing, I'm a competitive person, so for me, competition is fun, but the air shows, they give you such an immediate rush of energy because the people really appreciate what you do, especially out here at Barnes. Go ahead, now you can give him a wave. He's waving back to you.
So when you do an air show and you get out of your airplane and people are clapping, yeah, it's not a sensation you usually have at a contest because usually your competitors aren't clapping for you. So you really, yeah, you can't describe the feeling. It's, it's, uh, it's quite an elation.